Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a homemade function, I mean complex equation. <laughs> I don't know why I said function. It could be a function too, I guess, but we have 1 plus zi to the 8th power equals 1. And I'm going to show you something first, something that you probably would not use. Why am I showing that? Because you need to know what to do. Sometimes you need to know what not to do, right? It's important. And sometimes you can get stuck. Uh, and sometimes you don't even have a choice. You have to do it the hard way. But if there's an easier way to do it, why not, right? Because as an Oxford professor said, a good mathematician is a lazy one. Great. So first of all, we're going to look at the binomial theorem. You know why? Why not? <laughs> so the binomial theorem tells us that if you raise a plus b to the eighth power, you're going to get terms like this. First term is going to be a to the eighth. And uh, I could write a to zero, but that's one. And then I'm going to use a to zero as a binomial coefficient. Multiply by a to the seventh, and then b will be introduced. So what happens is the powers of a starts at the highest and then goes down as the powers of b is introduced slowly. Of course, the first term has b to the power zero, so that when you add the powers of a and b, it's always eight. And there are nine terms. So a couple things you need to know about the binomial theorem, so you're doing it correctly. And of course, the Pascal's triangle will give you the eighth row. Uh, which is the binomial coefficient. And then the next one is going to be a choose 2, a to the 6, b squared. And then you're going to realize a symmetry too. When you move a little further, you're going to get something like a choose 6, a to the second, b to the 6. And notice that these terms are basically interchanging their powers, but a choose 2 and a choose 6 are the same numbers because of the symmetry of the Pascal's triangle again. Nice. But this is way too long. And how do you solve an octic equation? I don't think there's an octic formula, is there? There's not even a heptic, there's not even a hexic, and not even a quintic. Isn't that sad? Like, we had to stop at the quartic, which is really sad, but what can you do, right? Anyways, so there are some solvable uh, quintics, by the way, which is kind of outside this discussion. So, there must be an easier way, you're probably thinking, right? And the answer is yes. Was that a question? Is there an easy way? Yes, okay, that was a question. Eighth roots of unity, does that make sense? So let's go ahead and do this. Complexify the one on the right hand side because one in the real world is one, but in the complex world, it can be written in infinitely many ways. Isn't that cool? I mean, complex numbers are amazing because you can write one in infinitely many ways. And think about it, one is a single number, just one, and it's just mind blowing. Anyways, uh, to give a long story short, we can write one as e to the power 2 pi ni, again, thanks to Euler. It's amazing. Why do I say again? Because uh, I have another channel called Cyber Math. Multi-level marketing, okay. Shameless uh, self-promotion. So if you ch check out the video that I made today or that is published today, you're going to realize that I'm using Euler's amazing uh, brain one more time. So anyways, uh, to find uh, z from here, we have to kind of get rid of the eighth power, but uh, there are basically eight numbers whose, hmm, how do you say that correctly? There are eight numbers whose eighth power equals one. Okay, I think I said it right, correct? And those numbers can be found by uh, what is called uh, roots of unity. In other words, I'm gonna consider the eighth roots of one uh, and n values are going to change from 0 to 7. I want to start at 0. You can also start go 1 through 8 as long as you uh, only use 8 values. But let's go ahead and start with n equals 0 because that's kind of fun. If n is 0, we're going to get 1 plus zi equals 1. 1 cancels out zi equals 0. Since i does not equal 0, z has to be 0. Okay, great. That was nice. And you probably knew that, right? I mean, if z is equal to 0, 1 to the 8th power equals 1. Everybody knew that probably. Now, what about the other ones? Let's find another one. If n is equal to 1, then we're going to get 1 plus zi equals e to the power pi i or i pi over 4. Yeah, i pi over 4 is probably better because it kind of emphasizes that the angle is pi over 4, which is basically cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. And then this uh, from here, you can basically subtract 1. That's going to give you zi, 
root 2 over 2 minus 1 plus root 2 over 2i, and then multiply by negative i or divide by i, whichever you like. I like multiplying by negative i, and that gives us a root 2 over 2 here, and this is just negated, and becomes this. So that would be one of the z values. For n equals 1, this would be the z value. For n equals 0, z is going to be 0, right? Okay, cool. And we can continue in this manner. Or we can do the following. So we can kind of consider a more general approach and kind of like, okay, I'm going to write it this way. I don't know if I could also write it i pi n over 4, same idea. And subtract 1 from both sides. And then divide by i or multiply by negative i, same idea. Of course, I'm going to need to multiply by i here to just cancel that out. Oops, did I do that correctly? Okay, I don't think so. I probably messed up. Hold on, let me back up a little bit. Okay, so I can't just multiply by i, right? Without multiplying z. So anyways, um, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by negative i. Here we go, okay. Sorry, I got a brain freeze there. And now z is going to be, if you distribute to negative i, that's going to be an i, and this will be that. So you can basically just negate this because this is going to be 1, 1 minus, uh, and we can put the i here. Okay, let me rewrite it. i on the outside, and then inside 1 minus e to the power pi, i pi n over 4. This is kind of nice because you can call this z sub n, and for every n value, we will get a different solution. And since there's 8 of them, we can replace n with 1 through 8 or 0 through 7. Make sense? Obviously, you can definitely go ahead and uh, do it like this. But you can also approach it a little uh, tiny bit differently. Obviously, you wouldn't want to use the binomial theorem, but there's another way to look at it. Let me show you, because that kind of came up. I didn't really think about it. It's kind of interesting, right? That's something that I missed. So easy. I mean, I don't know why I missed it, but anyways, I did. So here's the thing. I looked at this result like, oh, man. Expanded form, this is crazy. But wait a minute, I did not have z minus i, I had 1 plus z i, right? Where does this come from? I'm like, what the heck is going on, right? So I thought about it, I'm like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Because if you really think about it, we can kind of write the 1 as negative i squared, because i squared is negative 1, right? And then, uh-oh, we do get a common factor, which is i, and if you take out i, you'll get z minus i, and then when you raise both of these numbers to the i eighth power, I was going to say ith power, <laughs> Australians probably say ith, right? That's kind of interesting. Anyways, uh, i to the eighth is 1 because i to the fourth is 1. Therefore, the, this ends up being z minus i to the eighth. Maybe I would be asking a question like, hey, 1 minus 1 plus z i to the eighth equals z minus i to the eighth, and solve this equation, of course, anything will work, right? Anyways, <laughs> this is nice, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath, and bye-bye.